Hello everybody, it's Chris and welcome back to Something Else Amiga. What do we have on the show today? Today we're going to be going over Hyperion Entertainment's brand new Amiga OS 3.2.2 for 2023. First I'm going to cover burning some ROMs because I'm going to take the 3000 tower, write, erase, write some new ROMs, and then we're going to install the software on a blank freshly carved 3.2 partition from my Zulu drive. So, step one of this endeavor is to erase some ROMs. I got one in the oven already. We're gonna write the low, at least for the 3000 tower that I'm using here. So, this is my XG Pro 181 software. For the TL8662 Plus, I'm gonna browse to my desktop where I stashed the download. And 322 update. We're gonna go to ROMs. We're gonna burn the 3000 low here. And your new version is gonna be 47.111. Load it. Blank check my erase of my first one here. Just to make sure we're blank. We are good. Back. I'm gonna leave it at 13 volts. It's usually good at 12.5. And we're gonna say program. Boop. And program. This will take probably one to two minutes. Now I did have some blank ROMs, but I used them all up. So I have two labels for me. This is for the 3000 tower. I named them like kick 3.2.2, 3000 T, low, U180, high, U181. We have a programming successful. Now this is only as good as the next time, but it covers up the UV part that gets no light anyway and takes a tremendous amount of UV from the big moon here. Yep, it's the big moon. That's what it is officially called Big Moon China or China Big Moon. It's just the cheap Chinese UV EEPROM eraser. Got it on eBay. While I'm waiting for that second ROM to erase because I erased it for 40 minutes and it didn't erase, I still have 30. So I'm going to drink some beer. Okay, now the fun part of pulling these ROMs out of Big Hoss here. I'm going to be in the way because my studio is super crowded. The ROMs in the 3000 tower, I don't know if you can see, are all the way up here. So low is on the top, high is on the bottom. Low. Thanks, Jannard. And we're gonna go back in. Jannard makes light work of those bad boys. Blank check. Hot dog. Took 50 minutes. All right, so now I'm gonna load the second bin. What did I burn? High, low, I need to burn high, okay, and prog, and blind man walking. All right, so there's 3000 T high. Put this in real quick and put the lid on this. The 3000 tower is gonna sit underneath the desk for this video because I'm just showcasing the software and what is new with it. All right, let's light this candle. ECS Amiga 3000 tower with the 3.2 uh, workbench, but the kickstart ROM is, as you've seen, 3.2.2. It's still gonna say 3.2 ROM, 47.111. Now, I have not done the update yet, and I'm gonna do that from a GoTech that I forgot to hook up. Okay, so now as you can see, I have the GoTech in. Now you can do this much faster if you simply unpack the LHA archive you download from your account on HyperionEntertainment.com. But I'm gonna do it the old school way, pretending I have a whole bunch of floppies because I have an ADF drive of a GoTech external that I plugged in. So normally this would auto mount all of your stuff for you but we're gonna do it the regular way. Because I doubt everybody has a network card in their Amiga. I doubt everybody has something, who knows? But I'm doing it this way to show you how it's done. Okay, so this operating system will take installations of 3.2 or 3.2.1 to 3.2.2. In the documentation, it even states, the 3.2.2 update contains all of the updates from 3.2.1. So if you're installing from scratch, you do not have to first apply 3.2.1. However, if you already are on that and have applied it, that is fine too. 
We're going to go into the change log while she's doing her thing. And I'm just going to do intermediate because if you don't have a ROM, intermediate lets you choose your modules disk. If you just choose novice, it is not going to ask you for your machine type. English, like Jesus spoke, go for it, and it will start asking me for disks. During that time, I'm going to go over the change log with you. So TextEdit gets some improvements and has gained an about menu item. Show config and SysTools actually tells you about a 68060 revision number. Now it showed 68060 since 3.2 and it did not show you the rev number. So now instead of running the CLI or shell CPU command, you can just go to your uh, show config. Icon edit notifies the user if someone else modifies the icon file that is being edited. Pressing the help key brings up the whole color wheel and color icons have been improved so icons don't degrade. You might be in a situation where it will look worse than perfectly on, or worse than on a perfect display but it will not degrade the icon. Thus the dead downgrade dialog doesn't happen anymore. In some cases icon edit will open on a separate screen. What you say? Now, Kickstart can boot with earlier Workbench and Icon Library versions. There was an issue before, guys, where uh, 3.1.4 to 3.2 needed a two different Icon Libraries. And if you had 3.2 ROM, you tried to boot something else, you needed the 3.2 Library. It was just... It was fun. So, now, you can boot from 3.1 through 3.9 before installing Kickstart 3.2 on the volume. That is cool. That is cool. So the ROM will retro you back all the way to 3.1. Now is that Hyperion 3.1? Because that was some upgrades to the Cloanto Amiga ROM? Or the Amiga ROM that Cloanto got? Yep. We got some sketchboard gadgets that have uh, noted speed improvements for using Icon Edit. Intuition now checks for the mouse pointer change if the user presses Control alt shift Text editor got a bunch of updates, and the boards.library will now detect more boards. In this tower is the Live 2 Gotta Go Faster Z3 256 Meg RAM expansion, and that's it. It also has a 3640 uh, Commodore accelerator with a 25 megahertz 040. These are all in order, which is nice. Uh, a bunch of gadgets got a complete overhaul. We're going to check into this stuff, too. Layout gadget, window class, RAM disk has a complete overhaul, so it's less likely to cause issues. Huh. Summary of the change log. Text edit can now dump to an AREX port. The eval and CD file system have a resident tag again, and when invoked at system startup, will add a file system entry resource for itself in case it might be useful. doesn't say it's useful. Show Configs GUI has been extended to show much more detailed information regarding system memory, expansion libraries, devices, resources, residents, and drives. Icon Edit had a few huge makeover and added functionality. List Browser Gadget class allows for sorting by column. Workbench has a new menu item that allows users to eject disks. It requires that the device driver and drive support it. It always has worked on ADF files, but it will now work on CD or DVD drives. Workbench also supports a public WB disk gauge class gadget to get the fill gauge for the volume, the old fuel bar, old 1-3 thing. Workbench info can also now display the Workbench's icon information. So that's it. 322 is now complete. Remove your disk. It's only like three or four disks you saw. Proceed. It will reboot itself. And then it says here on the ROM, the uh, ROM that shipped with 3.2 did not display the boot animation for some machines, like I told this before, if you had no hard drive or no floppy drive connected. She's up already. 2023 Hyperion Entertainment, CVBA. Our workbench release is 3. If you can see that, I'm sorry. Our workbench release is now 3.2.2. We have 281 megs of, maybe you can see that, fast RAM. And two megs of chip. I'm sucking up about 300-ish K because I am in a high-res laced. I do see a little bit of flicker up here. That could be my overscan preferences. No worry. But yeah, 3.2 couldn't boot on some machines. It would display, display a black screen. It was actually working, but... People saw a black screen and figured it was no no go because the GUI animation wasn't being displayed. So after 3, 2, 1, the ROM displayed either a burgundy, 
blinking reddish screen when you had no boot device of a floppy disk and the normal purple disk load if you had a boot device such as a floppy drive. You obviously need to burn or flash a new ROM file shipped with this update to benefit from this improvement. However, your machine will happily work without it as long as you can connect a boot drive. The new ROM is recommended for dealers and system builders. The RAM handler has been improved so that the link made from NVARC to ENV now works more like it did before 3.2. Thank God, because 3.1.4 had that and 3.2 broke it. It still copies on read, but for now it will respect file if files are deleted from ENV and will not copy them over again before the next reboot. Neat. You understand the words that are coming out of my mouth? DOS library finally got the bug fixed in change mode, which resulted in crashes when performing nil redirections. I always uh, assign nil colon, and sometimes it would just freak out and wouldn't work. Never figured out why. Read a 3-2-1 update, and that was one of the bugs. No way! Uh, there's also an old workaround for a RAM handler, so RAM handler is now improved. That must be part of the new RAM disk. Shell had some tab to complete. Uh, fixes in reaction. A bunch of gadgets like the speed bar, the layout, click tab, integer, sketchboard, text editor, LED image, bevel image, bitmap image, and window class are updated. What is all that crap? That's the doohickeys that make the point and clicking and the pretty stuff look the way it does. All the window class, that's, hey, a window. It's the back, it's the stuff from reaction that does its thing. It works on classes, kind of like class act did. Um, there are some ROM modules disks that are now fixed. You got a new graphics library. Uh, the graphics library had a wrong calculation and sometimes too much data was copied on the ROM boot from 3.2 or 3.2.1 possibly um, where the destination buffer would record trashing 8 bytes of memory and sometimes that would lock up or crash your system and the color distance function is now more perceptually accurate uh, the fitting message is displayed to the user in this particular fashion. A window with uh, nothing is now named no title versus null. Icon library no longer has its issues with the Eastern program. And workbench library received many fixes to its window and drawer management routines. Improved indexing of HD toolbox. iPrefs when workbench screen could not be closed and reopened because it had a lock pending like, hey, intuition, trying to reset your crap and you got to reboot. That's fixed. It wouldn't, it wouldn't display the garbage in the windows anymore. This is a cool one, guys, so listen up. Hello? You there? I know it's boring, but check this one out. You ever turn your Amiga on, the freaking hard drive light's just on and there? Well, in 321, there was a thing called no drive LED patch that you could run with set patch to stop that. That is now default behavior in 3.2.2. So your hard drive light shouldn't freak out with that new ROM, and that is freaking epic. It says lots of cosmetic and smaller fixes. Please refer to the change log for further details. So first off, thank you, Hyperion. Thank you, Hyperion developers, beta testers, unpaid dudes working for a bologna sandwich. I know, I, can f I feel you, but you're appreciated. Let's check out the good stuff. This is a base installed, has nothing on it but Workbench. There should be no conflicts with anything, anything, anything. Tools, we're gonna check out the HD Toolbox. This is a Zulu SCSI, let's see what she says. All right, drives have been changed. What is that? Program C54, Zulu SCSI HD0 HDA, perfect. The drive revision is 322. I don't know what this one is. I'm going to say save on this one. Zulu SCSI UAE Pro. What is what is this? Is that my DH1? It sure is. 15 giger. Show config. Let's see if it picks up the live 2. My phone, you know I'm shooting a video. My phone goes off like a damn drug dealer. So here you go. In a expanded mode, you're going to see your revision of your CPU. If you have NTSC low res, pal, low res, don't do that. High res, high res laced. Uh, 16 to 40. 47111 ROM, 47.10 exec, 47.4 disk. I wonder if there's a new uh, library for the the hard drives. So we're going to click on expansions. It still doesn't say it, but it does show the vendor 2011Z3, uh, 256 meg memory from Live2. Kevin Alls build. You can see all my libraries. I do have the 6840 and the 6860 library. What residence I have, 
3,000 bonus. I don't know what the 3,000 bonus is. My drives in system. So you have an updated icon edit. Supposed to be better. Let's see. Uh, there's a wrench. Oh, it's, remember it said it was going to open on its own promoted screens? That's kind of cool. You're normal and selected. It's all by itself, so I can resize this screen and really get granular. It's opening in its own promoted screen. I'm Michael Jackson, you Tito. I would like to know where my DH1 is. So this is 45.16. All right, update the file system. 47.4, we're gonna say okay. Save change to drive. I'm gonna take this one too, partition drive, advanced options, add update. Update file set, it already is 47.4 on this one. Okay, it did it itself. Let's exit. And yep, updating my hard drive to the latest thing. You can see I have some stuff from Coffin and some stuff from me. And there's my Hippo and my Virus Z and all the stuff that was there. All right, so I control. We're gonna allow Windows to be moved off screen. I don't like the resizable from all sides. That's up to you guys. I'm gonna change resolutions. I'm trying to initiate the intuition thing. Now I'm going to turn these colors down a bit. NTSC High Res Lace. I'm going to take it down to an 8 color because it's just so much more snappy. Boom. It might not look as visually awesome as whatever, but that's, that's fine. Uh, let's check the help by pressing the help key. Wow, much more responsive. 3.2 features. I mean, give this a read. It's very intuitive and it's nice and easy to, man easy to manipulate contents. Uh, error codes and identifications, boot color, error messages, alerts or errors or Amiga DOS error codes. So if you're confused on what a guru is, we well can check this out. It gives you the whole shabizzle. Now all of this stuff is also available in your documentation that you're not going to read. Ain't nobody got time for that. I'm going to eject this by highlighting it once, going up here to icon and saying eject disk. You can't eject a hard drive. That was a quick update using the ROM and using a 3.2 base image. I do have 3.2.1, but you always want to try it out in a virtual environment or something you could give two craps less about in case something happens or back your stuff up would be smart too. However, with the Zulu, it's simply a HDA file named HD0 I drug and drag, and if I want to do this one, I can simply rename and be back up. So that is how you can update your machine from either 3.2 or 3.2.1 to the new 3.2.2 from Hyperion Entertainment. I hope this video finds you well and gives you a quick glimpse at what the updates are. You can continue to update your machine as you see fit. And thank you guys for watching. And as always, I hope you learned something. Funny, you bastard.